The white-tailed deer is America's favorite big game animal. And white-tailed deer farming is the fastest growing segment in the American agriculture industry. Our program's mission is to dive into the world of deer farming and discover why tens of thousands of Americans compete to create the biggest bucks in the world. And by the biggest bucks, we don't just mean the size of the antlers. The financial investment opportunities produced even on small parcels of rural land will blow you away. Join me as we discover how white-tailed genetics, deer auctions, animal husbandry, and so much more drive the deer farming industry. My name is Keith Warren, and this is Deer and Wildlife Stories. This week on Deer and Wildlife Stories, we're just outside of Pearsall, Texas at the G2 Ranch. Now, I was here last year for the very first time, and we featured the deer breeding program, and I was extremely impressed. Well, since then, they've made lots of improvements, and I think this time, you're gonna be impressed just as much as I was. My title here is I'm the Deer Facility Manager at G2 Ranch. My main duties are to oversee the deer that we have in our breeding facility. We currently have a, almost 500 adults and we have just over 300 live fawns on the ground for this season. I would say the best part of my job is just being able to be out here in the field, working with these animals, getting to know these animals, making sure that they're healthy and loving on them. Okay, so this is uh, one of the yearling pens out here at G2, and uh, the, I'm with the person who runs the entire deer breeding operation, and her name is Al. <laughs> Actually, it's Allison, but everybody calls her Al. So anyway, these are the yearlings, and uh, so how many do you have in here? We have 11 in this pen. Clearly, I mean, these guys, none of them were bottle raised, were they? I mean, no, I can sir. Tell. These are, uh, tell everybody what happens to these deer when they grow up. Well, these deer are being watched to see if they're going to turn into the next big, big boy out in the, the breeder rings. Other than that, they'll go out to our release site to improve our genetics on our does that are out there right now. All right, so these are other one-year-olds, and boy, I'll tell you, this is a really nice <laughs> pen of one-year-olds. Yes, sir. I mean, that guy right there is beautiful. Golly. We're, we're very pleased with how these boys are growing out. Okay, it is, uh, right now it's, uh, what, the middle of August? Yes, sir. Okay, and so these deer are just about done. I mean, they're, they're to the point that uh, uh, they don't really have any growing left. They're just drying up at this point. Yes. But, I mean, some really nice frames on them. Even as one-year-olds, I'm very pleased. I'm very pleased with how they're growing. So I know you've got uh, every one of the deer have to be, and y'all have to put them in NADAR, the North American Deer Registry. Absolutely. And so you know who the mother and the father is uh, yes. and all. But uh, clearly this pen, these deer are better than the last pen that we just saw. Yes. I have to build you up in suspense. Oh, so we're going to a better pen? <laughs> oh, we're going to a better pen. <laughs> right on, well, let's go. <laughs> Well, you weren't kidding, save the best for last. I mean, <laughs> check out that yearling right there. Okay, now you've got to tell me who that one's out of. He's out of Blackjack. Well, yeah, He's folks, sired by Blackjack. If y'all don't know who Blackjack is, clearly you're not in the deer breeding business, because that deer right there, I mean, look how big he is. And Blackjack has got to be one of the most remarkable deer ever born. He is um, a beautiful deer. I mean, and he's not, what, well, he's less than an hour right up the road. Yes, sir. Okay, so, um, Speaking of blackjack, and then you got Enterprise, like we talked that Don mm -hmm. Sandy had, and then and then Willie, and all these these deer, they're so popular. What happens is so many people wind up breeding them, that what happens is the, the bloodlines get so tight, it's really hard to distinguish genetically who is who. And it's for that reason that Nadar came out with that SNPs profile. Yes. And the SNPs profile has 400 and something markers where the other one had 25 or something. I mean, so it's so much more accurate. So without a question, they can find out exactly yes, sir. who everybody is bred to. I mean, so that's really good. So that's a blackjack son. And uh, right now, folks, we're going to head on over to take a look at the two-year-olds. I'm pretty impressed with that guy. Yep. <laughs> Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you by MVP Whitetails, Dr. Ray Favero's Whitetail Genetics, UVC Power Sports Tractors and Outdoors, and Vandergriff Toyota in Arlington, Texas. Now it's time for one of our frequently asked questions. All 
All right, so when we have deer under anesthesia, we look for any other issues they may have and because uh, you can't see all the issues when you're looking at them in the pen. So this particular deer had elongated hooves and uh, sometimes they just do that. And I think it's from overnutrition. They just eat so much that their hooves just grow so much. So what we've done here, we've taken care of the hooves. We've just cut the excess off of it, taken a tool and uh, smoothed it up. And uh, when she wakes up, of course, she didn't feel a thing. But when she wakes up, she'll be able to walk a whole lot better. If you've got questions about deer, we've got answers. Just head on over to our website. Stay tuned. Deer and Wildlife Stories will be right back. Okay, so you've got property and you're wanting to build. Maybe a barn dominium, maybe deer facilities, or maybe a badass lodge. Well, you've got to check out Rafter P Construction, the leading design build contractor across the state of Texas. Specializing in quality farm and ranch projects, Rafter P Construction encourages their customers to be very hands-on. Rafter P Construction will be with you every step of the way to make your one-of-a-kind build a reality. All right, so these are two-year-olds, and uh, oh my God, <laughs> they are unbelievable. So, you know, I think that any deer hunter watching would uh, would would learn something by looking at these deer here. We just showed you the one-year-olds, okay? And you can see there's some nice ones, and that blackjack mm -hmm. one-year-old was really nice. But uh, you can take a look at these guys, and you can see the difference between just across the board, average one-year-olds versus two-year-olds. So, uh, any deer hunter watching the show, I think you ought to sit here and go, wait a minute. Why don't you just let those one-year-olds go until they're two? Absolutely. And then what we're going to do now? I mean, I mean, there are some really nice, framey two-year-olds in here. There are. But uh, all right, so let's we're gonna we're gonna run out of daylight if we don't hurry up. So let's head on over. Oh, that guy right there is good. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Isn't he pretty? Yeah. All right. So the three-year-olds. Yes, sir. Okay. How far are they? Oh, just down the way. All right. Let's go. All right, so we were heading to a, another pen of deer to show you, and then all of a sudden it said, stop, Al! <laughs> Look at this. This is a pen of breeder bucks, okay? And so uh, Al carries with her uh, some uh, paperwork every day to and from the pen so she can quickly reference who everybody is, not just the breeder bucks, but all the deer on the entire place. And so I've got in my hand the, the page with these bucks, 14 bucks in here. Yes, sir. And this is amazing. I mean, you look at them, there's there's not a slouch in here. And the reason why is because you can look on here and you can see sires like Shadow, Freeze Frame, Unforgiven, Blue Chip, Kid Rock Express, Kid Rock, Triple Crown, Bambi Jack, Blue Chip, Triple Crown, American Pharaoh, Triple Crown, Texas Crown. That's why. Okay, it is all pedigree. And so explain to everybody about these bucks. These are not your primary breeding bucks. So. No, sir, they're not. These are what we call our cover bucks. Mm -hmm. So every year we AI a certain percentage of our deer, um, and then once they recover from their laparoscopy uh, surgery, they go into pens, separated out, and we put one of these cover bucks in so that they can take yeah. over, <laughs> per se, if their artificial insemination didn't take. That's cool, and so as you can see, uh, uh, I mean, it's the, from the list here and from looking at them there, <laughs> they're awesome, so. Well, that's good. I like seeing detail records, and that's a, a, another change that I've seen uh, from last year to this year. A lot of good record keeping, and if you're going to yes, be a sir. deer farmer, you need to have good records, and good records uh, make you make good decisions, and clearly those are good decisions. Thank you. All right, so here we have three-year-olds, and out of mm -hmm. all these three-year-olds, how many of them, I should say, weren't born here? Actually, all of them were born here. Okay, so... Born and raised. Yep. So how long has G2 been breeding deer? I believe it's right at about 10 years. And, and, and I mean, look, there's some really pretty deer in here. There are. And so, uh, how many bucks are in this pen? We have 43 bucks in this pen that will go to release site. Okay, and so... All these bucks, and, and, and y'all do sell bucks, don't you? Yes, sir, absolutely. Um, there is potentially a couple that may not go to release and will be going to breeder facilities. Okay, okay, yes, so sir. if somebody wants more information, 
uh, about coming down here to G2 Ranch. Again, we're just outside of Pearsall, Texas, okay? And you can't miss this place. I mean, G2 Ranch is, is big, okay? It's big and they've got <laughs> big flags out in the beautiful lodge and, and uh, I mean, it's wonderful. We'll have a telephone number coming up so you can get a hold of them. All right, so right now it is, uh, it's the middle of August, okay? And dove season is right around the corner. And as the sun is setting, we're seeing doves flying everywhere. And I mean, they've got irrigated fields out here. Mm -hmm. And some of, I mean, it's like Argentina, the birds are flying so good. So uh, when we get back from the break, it's gonna be dove season. We're gonna be out here and showing you how great some of the dove hunting is, because they do commercial dove hunting out here. And they also do hunting for some exotic animals as well. So we'll show you some of that when we get back from the break. Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you by Divine Genetics. LE Fence, Record Rack Deer and Elk Feeds, Massey Ferguson Tractors at UVC Power Sports, and by New Dart. Deer and Wildlife Stories will be right back. Closed captioning is brought to you by Advanced Deer Genetics. They say that in a few minutes from now, it's gonna look like Argentina. 80 acres of sunflowers, and uh, there are millions of little sunflower seeds out here. The doves are going to be in here big time. There's millions and millions of seeds. And what happens, those birds live in Pearsall. These are white-winged doves. And so what happens, they spend the night in Pearsall in the morning and wake up and they're hungry. So they come to the sunflower field and uh, Don and Sandy have everybody waiting for them. Okay, what they have is they have uh, bales out there, round bales, and they got numbers painted on them. So they'll wind up taking hunters and put them all around this big sunflower field. And uh, so that's your little station. And you'll sit there and you'll wait, and sometimes you're sitting there like, man, when are they going to show up? <laughs> when they show up, you're going to know it because it's like a swarm of bees. And they show up, and all of a sudden it's like popcorn going off, pop, 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 pop. People are shooting, and just like we say there's millions of seeds out there, there's millions of doves out there, and it's remarkable. And so what happens, the birds, they come in the field, and you shoot them up like crazy. Now the limit right now is 15 white wings a day. And so anyway, it doesn't take long to get your limit, even if you're a marginal shot, because you have so many shot opportunities. And the cool thing about dove hunting to me, it's, it's, it's a social activity. I mean, you're gonna see uh, husbands and wives and their kids and grandkids, and occasionally see somebody bring a dog out here, and, and you're gonna see people uh, talking and having fun, because that's what it's about, it's about having fun. So it's not a real serious hunt, but it's a real serious shoot, and I guarantee you, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> it didn't take long for me to get my limited birds. I mean, it was like, I'm done. <laughs> anyway, so it's like, now what are we gonna do the rest of the show? Well, it's pretty simple. I gotta go get Maddie, because we're going for exotics. My dad has ranted and raved for weeks about G2 Ranch, so I'm just excited to get here and see everybody. Yeah, the accommodations are great, but he just loves the people, so I'm really excited to see the staff and see the ranch, see all the animals, and just hang out with everybody. Maddie is uh, persistent when it comes to hunting, and, uh, and she, so she spent many a day in a stand hunting for axis deer. And uh, you know, she has killed a few, but she's never killed a big one. She just hadn't been lucky enough to get a big one. And that's the reason why I said, you're going to the G2 Ranch with me because we're going to change your luck. So we get situated in the stand and we're sitting over this clearing. And if you look out, the brush is so thick and you're wondering how can any animals live there? We're sitting there for a while. I'm not seeing anything. And I'm kind of wondering, man, are we going to get skunked? And all of a sudden, we had this Neil guy come in. And Neil guy are big critters, but they're super elusive. They're very camouflaged. And this guy, he was a big one. And we could see him in the brush, but he never came out. But we got some really good footage of him. And I mean, he was a phenomenal nail guy. And I hope one day I can hunt one. So we're sitting in the stand and we're having a good time. We've seen some wildlife. We saw a phenomenal nail guy. And all of a sudden, we had some axes show up. 
They were nice axes, I thought they were huge. But Glenn told me, no, no, we got bigger ones, which I didn't believe because they looked great. All of a sudden, these two axes started fighting, and I've never seen anything like this before. They were throwing dirt at each other, kicking, they are putting their scent glands all over the trees and the grass, and it was just like, like a fight between two teenage boys. It was hilarious. So it's getting dark, and my hopes are kind of starting to fade, and all of a sudden, Mr. Big shows up. We're watching him, I get my gun up, I'm comfortable, and I think that this is the axis I want to take. Then two more show up. But Glenn says, no, no, that first one's a really good one. We want to take him. So I get my gun on him. I'm nice and steady, but he's spooking. I don't know if he's going to stay there very long. He stays for a second. He turns around, and he starts walking and stops. And I knew that was my only chance. Oh, that was a hit. That was yeah, a hit. Yeah, you smoked him. All right, here he is, this Axis. We did not think we were gonna get him tonight. We didn't. No, I mean, we, we saw a ton of movement, but everyone that came in, one had a broken beam, and then another, he was too little, and then we got footage of some fighting and kind of sparring, and right before dark, this guy showed up, along with two others, and I've always wanted to kill a big Axis. I've hunted Axis before, and they are hard to hunt. But this tops everything. He's absolutely beautiful. He's gonna taste phenomenal. And I just have to give a big thank you to G2 Ranch because I couldn't have done this without them. So thank you very much. Quite I Great mean, job, you put a, a really good shot on him. Well, you're my lucky charm. I mean, seriously, and this 6.5 Creedmoor, I'm super impressed with this round. I've always loved it, but I've never shot it in an AR-10 platform. So I gotta thank APF for that, and I'm just thrilled. I can't wait to get back and show my dad this and celebrate a great hunt with y'all. That's awesome. Congratulations, you did, a, you did a really good job. Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you by Maloof Whitetails, the North American Deer Registry, New Dart and White Tails of Louisiana. Now some great information on fencing from our friends at LE Fence. So I got the guys over here doing some fence work and uh, I want to tell you when you're doing fence work around deer you need to be dealing with people that know how to not just do fences and do a good job with that, but work around deer. And that's the reason why I've got the folks from LE Fence over here. They office out of Central Texas, but they do fences all over the country. But the one thing that's cool about the guys at LE Fence is the fact that they can come into a deer farm and erect the fence and get done real quick. And they've got a saying at LE Fence, you know when they work to? They work from can to can. So anyway, in other words, they work to get it done and they're getting it done all in one day here just another day on the farm. Stay tuned, Deer and Wildlife Stories will be right back. Y'all know my dad. He likes to hunt with weird stuff and you could guess what he's bringing here, the 50 BMG. And he's going after something that's worthy of being hunted with a 50 BMG. That's a scimitar horned oryx. So you may think if there's a bunch of animals, it ought to be pretty easy to get close to them. Uh -uh. There's a bunch of animals! That means they got lots of noses, lots of eyeballs, and lots of ears. And they're always like they got radar looking out for you. So it's not easy. As a matter of fact, it's hard. The more animals, the harder it is. So we wound up, we got up on a group of oryx, but the, the lay of the land, the topography, I mean, they're kind of off this edge a little bit. We're sitting there watching them, they move off to the side, so Glenn and I are in hot pursuit. So the weather was really bad and we decided to give it a break and let it clear off a little bit. It turns out it did. Still really cloudy, which is perfect for spot stock conditions. Got a little bit of wind, so we went up, we saw him, and Glenn says, come on, let's go down this road. We can make real good quick time and there's a side road that goes off of it. If we're lucky, we can get set up, put the rifle on the Kofi and just wait, and hopefully they'll come walking out on that road for a clear shot. 
So we hadn't been there just a few minutes, and all of a sudden, a cow steps out. And she's standing there, and then goes, it's a cow. It's like, and, you know, the cows and the bulls both have horns, so he's got a lot more experience at it than me. So anyway, look at this cow, she steps off, and all of a sudden, it's a bull. It's a bull. Anyway, I'm looking down the gun, it's a bull. Confirmation, I want to make sure we're looking at the same animal. And when I touch it off, it's the, you talk about fury. It's a, it is awesome. Look at this bull right here. Wow. <laughs> wow. Congratulations. Look at, that, look at that hole. Thank you. Man, that was fun. So on a scale of one to 10, this hunt, eh, it's gotta be a 10. And the reason why is because it saddens me to leave. It saddens me to know that, you know, I don't know when the next time I'm gonna wind up coming through these gates is gonna be, but I'm coming back. And uh, I encourage everybody else to look at, if you're thinking about hunting exotic animals or hunting white-winged doves, you know, I encourage you to come down here because you'll be back too and you'll see what I've seen and what hundreds of other people that have been down here have seen that when you come and you're a guest here with Don and Sandy Gilchrist, you're going to become family and you'll want to come back too.